Hi, everyone. We're going to go ahead and start. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm very, very excited to have you all here and talk a little bit about um, using AI. Let me go back because I think you're just seeing everybody there. All right, so we are going to be using a Nearpod for today's session. If you're able to enter, we're just going to have a little questionnaire. If you cannot participate on the Nearpod, um, I know where uh, some of us are phones and, and things like that. Feel free to use the chat to answer any of like the um, um, interactions that we're going to be having through Nearpod. So again, we are. Um, I'm go ahead and present myself. My name is. Oh, sorry. As you're going into the Nearpod. I'll leave the code up there just in case. I'm going to go ahead and present myself. I'm Ms. Juarez, Dalet Juarez from Guerra Elementary. I'm currently a CLL at this school. Um, I help out all of my teachers from pre-K to fifth grade, but I have a passion. And um, I love, love, love reading language arts in general, um, specifically in the fields of grammar, such as revise and edit and now with our star 2.0 with ECR I came to study it a lot and I came to love it and, and just learn um, several things that could help us out with that so I'm excited to share my knowledge again I'm not like an expert 100% I'm still learning and as I go so feel free to add on to anything that you already know or would like to to talk about so I'm going to go ahead and talk about during the session um, that how to use AI to rate I know that it's uh, for some of us, it's new. Some of us might be new teachers. Some of us might be new to the grade level. Um, and we know how time consuming it is, not only teaching it, but actually rating it so that we could f provide effective feedback for our for our students. Right. So I'll go ahead and give you about a 10 more seconds to log in and I'll go ahead and continue. Again, I'm excited. Thank you for being here. This is actually my second session. Um, I know we're a little bit today, but that's even better. So we could have just more to us, right? And um, we are going to be open, opening up for questions um, or any comments towards the end. So feel free to, to write down anything as I go. If I am going too fast, I do tend to get excited. So I go super fast. Um, just let me know and I'll, I'll go ahead and slow down. But you may use a chat for, for anything and, and I'll start. Um, I'll, I actually have a second device, so I'm seeing everything as as I go. So we'll go ahead and start um, today with the little questionnaire. It's basically just to, there's there's some answers I might be right or wrong, right? But there, it, it's just a pretty little knowledge for me just to know where to spend more time on. Of course, I'm going to spend most of my time teaching you the AI part of it. Uh, but just in terms of any um, extra agenda things that we might have in place, such as misconceptions, blueprints, and things like that. So um, I'll go ahead and start the questionnaire. And as you're doing that, I'll give you about three minutes to do that. It's about little nine questions, just what you know. Um, I'll play some music, hopefully you enjoy it. So I'll go ahead and start it here. Hopefully it works, the music. If not, probably some music. So you go to do the questions at your own pace and you know that means I have to leave. Lately I've been I've been thinking I want you to be happier. I want you to be I want you to be happy. 
Are you familiarized with AI, AI for ECRs? So for those of you that are joining, we are on a little near pod. There's the, the code is going to stay up there. Um, just line it, nine little questions. What you already know. They say, oh my God, I see the way you shine. Aside from teaching you. Take your hand, my dear, and bless them both in my. You know you stopped me dead while I was passing by. And now I beg to see you dance just one more time. Ooh, I sing to, sing to, sing to every time. And oh my, I, I, I like your style. Ooh, you make me, make me, make me wanna try. And now I beg to see you dance just one more time. So I say, dance for me, dance for me, dance for me. Again, I am here to share with you on how to use AI to save you time. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. Sorry if I kick anyone out who are still submitting. All right. So for our agenda today that we just went through our questionnaire, we are going to just go into a little bit of the rubrics. I, um, as I mentioned before, I am currently an elementary. Um, I've been studying galore in terms of everything having to do with the ECR. I haven't gotten the opportunity to do the secondary. So if anyone here that secondary would like to add on, feel free. Um, I'm learning and I would love to learn more, right? Um, just so that we could even help our fifth graders going into um um, middle school specifically to see if it continues on and how we could pretty much uh, align with ourselves. Um, so we are the blueprint focusing he today is basically the third through fifth along with the passages. And I am going to go oh, take the time to actually show you how to use AI to rate and just discuss some classroom activities that we're currently using um and going to talk about benefits of using the ai and some ai resources so again thank you for being here i'm excited to share my passion with you um so in terms of some of the questions for the ec uh for the questionnaire it was asking how many it's worth um i actually in the morning i hadn't gone in through like the actual blueprint for the rest but they all are worth uh, 10 points. Now, what does change from what I noticed from secondary is the amount of points that the reading star test does consist of, right? So in third through fifth, it is a total of 52. A lot of our students freak out when we tell them because they're like, oh my gosh, 52 questions, right? And they're freaking out as it is, right? So um, it's more of a conversation, right? It's not the 52 questions because, you know, we, we with star 2.0, there are some that are worth more than just that one point, right? So in this terms, the extended constructed response, it is worth 10 points, right? So 10 points out of the 52 points ends up being 19% in, right, in, um, in third through fifth. Now, what I do the calculation, right, is a 10 out of 52. I know from what I saw that secondary had like a total of 56 points at max, if I'm not mistaken. So 10 out of the 56, um would be about those that 18 percent, right so it is worth a lot i know some of us like i said we might be new we might not feel comfortable with ecr um so especially before it was just you know writing was specifically taught as we low-key said right and say in fourth grade or in seventh grade right but now it's all across so um some of us we try to avoid it or we like to spend less time on it um to you know 
focus this have the students focus on something else but we do see that it's it is a, a high uh, percentage of of what it's worth right in the start in total uh rubrics i'm gonna go ahead and open it up uh, i do have everything organized in the sense just to save time right so uh, i will go over how i got everything but basically for the rubric i went into the ta i'm gonna get it generic from the informational. I did color code it as I analyze it just to understand it better as we were coming up with um, different graphic organizers. So here it is divided into two parts. Uh, one part or the first part is organization and development of ideas. Now this is the informational rubric. Uh, we do. We also have the argumentative. So the only difference from what I saw is literally the verb, the the vocabulary, right? So instead of saying central idea, it says argument or claim. So everything else stays the same. Now, this is focusing a little bit on like the strategy that we're using, which is racer um, or racer, what region says. But I mean, like I said, if is if any other schools or secondary uses something else, I mean, and it goes along by all means share so we could continue discussing and aligning ourselves as a district. So the first part, like I said, it's all color coded and, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit on how I use the color coding in the classroom or how we use it. So central idea is very big, right? It's making sure that it's pretty much identifiable, which is the restating and the answering and it's easy to follow. Um, it also talks about the introduction, the conclusion. How do I ensure that there's a conclusion by using, you know, in conclusion as your transitional word? Uh, we make sure that there's sentences and paragraphs. Everything's all connected, all connected back to the central idea. Um, that there's evidence, right? Uh, this is in yellow that it's clearly explained for uh, the difference between the SER that's only worth the two points. You only basically have to do rest restate an answer, right? Which is what we're known, what we're used to as our strategy is restating an answer and just providing the evidence. You don't have to explain it for the SER. Um, I know a lot of us, you know, just do, we teach it that way. So it could be easier for our students to just continue on for the ECR. But basically they really don't keep that third sentence, I guess you could say in mind which is the explanation here they do. Um, and just keep in mind that it's pretty much double the seat, the citing and the explaining because you do need at least two answers. Um, and then at the end, it's also asking for pairs. You at least want to draw from one text. This is for elementary. I did notice from uh, secondary, I think it does change from two, just depending on the wording of the prompt. Um, and then that second part, that one is worth three points. The second part is worth two, which is the conventions. Again, in SER, nothing is accounted for as long as um, this is not accounted for as long as we understand what the student is answering. But in ECR, it is worth two points. This one, um, it goes into any punctuation, capitalization. We like to co consider like the arms and the cups. So from the three and the two, that's a total of five points. But the blueprint sets 10. Why? Because there is two raters. What, uh, previous year, the raters were two people, right? Two educators or anyone that the, the TA hired to, to rate. What was different this year was AI, right? So AI was actually whether no order, particular order, right? But that second rater. So um, we found out like towards the end and, you know, we I wish we would have had that re this resource um, now that I see that it worked, right? Hopefully you think the same, but now we continue from here, right? So it is that second rater and we want to pretty much work smarter, not harder to see how we could beat the AI, just like Mac Miller said earlier, like it's not an actual person, right? So, um, we could pretty much find those little tricks around it to see how we could better our students. So, uh, those were the rubrics. Well, specifically from third through fifth for informational, now, passages, um, you can get from literary to informational. Um, a lot of, there was a misconception about, you know, we since it's an informational or argumentative prompt, that it's only gonna come from informational, but we do see that we get it from poems, drama, the, those informational prompt texts, which is explaining something, 
right, um, from any genre. The only difference is that argumentative is from an argumentative piece where you have to, you know, choose a side. So we can see them in any genre, which is very important to, um, you know, practice and teach all of them across with an ECR prompt. Now, I'm going to take the time to show you. So hopefully you're ready to learn with me. Now, just as um, during our lunch and learn session, Mr. McMiller did mention several AIs that can be used in different ways. And just like he mentioned, it's just depending and, and knowing which one is your preference for a specific task, right? So for this purpose of using the AI, I am going to be using for the, I'm going to be showing you two different ones. The first one is Mag Magic School. Um, and then the second one would be Chat GPT. Again, I'm not no one to sell either one you get to decide either personally or as you know as an individual sorry or as a team as a campus as a district whichever one it is that you want to use for this purpose so this first one um this is magic school as mentioned there's a lot of teacher tools a lot of us are familiarized with it but for the purpose of using um ai to rate your ecrs we are going to be using reina um you might be hearing me calling referencing her as a she i try to avoid it <laughs> you know but you know it's just because her name is reina reina i guess and the little picture looks like a girl so um but so these steps that i'm going to be going i'm going to be explaining a little bit on how i came up with it and what i did to to kind of mess around with it as i was exploring this so in order she's presenting yourself is if you notice she's asking you to be or it's asking you to be specific right so something that um a description of what i what i wanted to do for me uh was with the help of miss debbie and valentin to come up with a description that i will share with you that way you don't have to come up with this uh, a different one is basically this one right so i'm going to be asking it to be a raider for the star in texas I'm going to be providing them with providing it with the five pieces. One of them is the rubric. The second one is a passage. The third one is the actual prompt that they have to answer. The fourth one, just for accuracy, is a sample score. Technically, sometimes you don't have to use it, but I did add it just so that um, I did notice that it's a little bit more accurate. And finally, I'm going to be actually providing student responses so that it could help me great. So in this case, the resource that I'm using is the actual star, this past star, fourth grade passage, fourth grade student responses. Um, so um, basically so that we could see how they're, they're going to be providing us. So I did get one that was scored a 10. Um, this case, the only reason why I am using the scores at a maximum of five points and not the 10 is because AI is used as that one rater only. So the rubric, as we saw, it's only a total of five. Now, for the purpose of your grading, when it comes to, you know, benchmarks, data, anything like that, you do want to give it a 10. So you, the second person could be yourself, a colleague, or just doubling it up. It's totally up to you, your district, however you all decide. Uh, but in this case, we are using a total of five um, so that we could get accurate, you know, based on the rubric. So what I'm going to do and then oh, and then at the bottom, I am asking it to ask to ask for the information one by one, which is this part right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. And I used it as a. Um, on a Word document right here, copy and paste, I'm controlling, I'm using control V and C and B by the way. But um, so yeah, I'm I'm asking it and I'm, I described it. You could literally type it one by one and don't have to be as specific, but this one was the one that pretty much helped us towards the end to be accurate, as accurate as it could be. So as I scroll down, they already captured this one. So now I'm gonna start adding one by one. So the first one I'm going to be providing is the rubric. Now, the difference between, uh, one of the differences on Reina is that it actually asks us or it lets us provide an actual PDF. So I have all of them. Like I said, everything's already organized just for the sake of time, but I got this strictly from TEA 
and it is right here, right? So third through fifth informational. So um, if you notice, it's not going to let me upload without a description. So I'm just going to put this is the rubric. You don't even have to put a complete sentence. You could just leave it as rubric, but that's totally up to you. So now it's asking me for the second one, which is the passage. So what I did with the passage is I went to Cambium, right? I Like I said, I go the long way. I Googled star release Cambium. I logged in and the 2024 passages, is already, they're already released. So what I did is I took snips of the passages. Let me show you how that looks like. And I put it on a Word document first so I could convert it. So this one, where is it? fourth grade, we're using fourth grade. Sorry, I have a lot of stuff because I was messing around with a lot of them. So here it is. So I took snips and I put them all together, right? Um, and then I, you could actually upload a Word document, but I, for Reina purposes, it's the only one that lets me do a PDF. So I, I like to upload it like that. So then here, I'm actually going to upload. So that's what it looks like, right? I just took snips from Cambium. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to upload the um, actual passage, which is this one. Again, I can't upload unless I put something. This is a passage. And then it's asking me for the prompt. I did the exact same thing. My prompt is right here. I put it on a Word document. I snipped it and I, I made it into a PDF. So that's what I'm that's what I'm going to be uploading here. But I mean, you could pretty much type it on your own and just copy and paste it without, you know, as a text instead of it being a, a PDF, whatever you feel comfortable. Um, oops. So we're looking for the prompt. Fourth grade ECR. Again, I can't submit without a description. This is the prompt. Now it's asking me for the actual student sample. So in this case, what was easier for me? I just put it in a Google slide because of the background. It looked cute, right? But I could have left it in a Word document. So from TA, this was actually a score 10, right? In TAIs because of those two raters. But um, it's asking for, again, we're using those max five points in the sense of only using AI as one rater. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that as a sample. So, like I mentioned before, you really don't have to put a sample, but for accuracy, you, um, I noticed that it worked a little bit better. Now it's asking me for the actual response of the student. So I'm pretending that, oh, well, not pretending, right? Because these are my students. So these are all the students that I have. We're only going to work with student one to see the accuracy. So this is student one. Oops, sorry. We're on magic school. Miss with Reina. So this is my student one. And let's see what it gives me. So here, if we notice that it gives me one out of three for the organization, no patterns, which is the first part. And for the conventions is giving me one out of two, which is a total score of two out of five. Now, I do want to show you just so that you could see um, or decide, I guess, which one to use in terms of accuracy. For that student one, TA actually scored it a six, right? So we do see how it's a little bit off, but you know, it still helps us, it still saves us time. Um, again, um, you all decide if you want to use that one. I'll show you ChatGPT um, in a bit. So we kind of have an idea. Now, the next part or this last part that I want to ask Reina is, you know, how am I going to help this student go from a two to a five, right? Or how to progress. And I'm a new teacher, so I'm going to pretend that I'm a new teacher. So I want an actual script to help me with the verbs, with the vocabulary um, for me to become an expert. So, uh, and then what I like about this is that you don't have to put in a complete sentence. So it's just like a description. So you could put, um, this one I am going to make it up on the spot so that you could see the description of it. So help, please, you know, I'm being polite. Please help with a script for teacher to use during a student teacher 
sorry, I'm excited. Conference for feedback on how to improve. Maybe how or where to improve. So let's see. So here it is. So here's a student uh, feedback script, right? An introduction. Hi, thank you for meeting with me today. Let's understand our goals. And then, of course, you want to start off with complementing the strengths, um, identifying areas of improvement. Uh, one thing I noticed, and then you mention a specific thing, right? And then providing instance, second paragraph, you mentioned blah, blah, blah. Um, and then if you notice, like it's everything specific to how they could improve. And that helps with the student um, teacher student conference. So that is Raina. Um, using Raina, remember I was going to show you two different ones. So Raina scored it a two out of five. Um, in the sense of TA, we saw that it was scored a, a six. So I'm calculating like three and three, right? Um, oh, sorry, I used my math wrong. Right, three and three, yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, we see that it's slightly off, but similar to what they're asking us to do. That was magic school. Again, there is going to be um, time for questions or comments towards the end, um, but we'll, so feel free to start on the chat again. I'm looking at it as I go. So now I'm going to transition over to chat GPT. Something that I do want to point out is that I got super excited and I paid for the upgrade. <laughs> like, I don't know why I was just like messing with it. Um, it does like images or whatever, but I am going to... Um, go through it as if I don't have the upgrade. The only thing that it is limited to is the amount of uploads that you are willing, that you're able to, to um, the amount of PDF, sorry, that you're able to upload at a time. But there is a trick to that and I'll show you. So uh, ChatGPT, this is the second one that I am gonna be showing, the second AI that I'll be showing you. Um, so ChatGPT is limited, but it's the same process. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to ask is, of course, the description, telling them what, telling it what it's going to be. Again, I just copied and pasted something generic across. Again, I could share this. Oh, you don't have to put a sample, whatever it is, but it's just something generic that we, that, uh, we came up with with Miss Debbie and Valentin. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it. The same exact things. And if you notice, compared to Magic School, this one's already asking me specific one. So the rubric, because I'm limited and it sometimes doesn't capture it very well because it has like all the other pieces, right? Just to limit the amount of how many I could actually like the PDFs that you could upload because I only it only lets you do two a day I think and then you have to wait the following day what I did for this one using AI is I pretty much asked you know AI what's the scoring broken down in a word you know word format for TA star right and this is what it came up with so if you notice like it has a zero one to three again zero to three points and zero to two so just for the sake of the amount of PDF for the non um, pro version or upgraded version. I'm just going to save the amount because I want to save it for the passage and I want to save it for the prompt maybe, right? Because we know that prompt, maybe we could type it up. So this one, I'm going to do the text version for the rubric. Now it's asking me for the passage. Now, this one, if you notice, it gives you an option to do it from Google Drive. I'm going to upload from the computer. Something that I do want to point out is sometimes it does it because I, I'm assuming that it's because it's a SNP, not an actual PDF, you know, from TEA window release. Sometimes it doesn't capture it. That's why I have some more documents here. So let me see if this one's going to let me. So this is from fourth grade using the same one. You see, so it didn't let me capture it, which is why I extracted it to Word document. And that's why. So again, you kind of want to play around with this. Just practice, I think, from the previous. Um, and you want to. You're still. We're still smarter than AI, right? For people, we have a brain. It doesn't. I like to say it. Tell the kids all the time. So, word document of the passage. So, this one you actually don't have to. Um, 
put a description, but I want to put it anyway so it doesn't get confused. So this is the passage. And you see how that Word document worked better. And then I have I did the same exact thing with the prompt. Um, I'm going to upload it as a document. And we saw that PDF didn't work, so I'm just going to continue with the Word, doc Word document. This is the prompt. Now it's asking me for that student sample score of his five. I'm going to go back to it from over here on top. Copy and paste it on ChatGPT. Now it's asking me for the actual student responses. I'm going to use the same one just so that you could see the alignment, which is more accurate, and you get to decide which one you want to use. Again, copy and paste. And it's the same exact one as I used in Magic School with Reina. So here, if you notice, that's being nicer than Reina, <laughs> but here, if you notice, it is it did capture a little bit more. Two out of three versus the one out of three for the organization pattern, and it says why. And the writing convention stayed as a one, and it says why. So versus Reina, ChatGPT scored it as a three out of five. So if you recall, the actual TA or TA rating or release, I guess, because it's AI and that other rater, right? It was a six. So we could see that it's, <coughs> excuse me, my throat's getting dry. It's a little bit more accurate. Excuse me, sorry. So again, I'm not. I'm not here to tell you which one's better or which one to use, but you get to decide based on accuracy. And you could just play around with all of them. I know that Mac Miller mentioned a lot more. But these are the only two that I worked with so far. So now I go back. And again, the last thing that I want to do, the last thing that I want to ask for is just to help me out is that student teacher conference script, right? So again, I don't even remember what I put on the other one. So I'm just going to put, please, being polite, uh, provide me with the script with feedback. I don't even know if I'm ready to write. Uh, with feedback for a teacher, oops, student teacher conference. Let's see how this one goes. So there it is. Um, so there it goes, right? It starts off, let's talk about the passage, so forth. Uh, teacher, teacher. It was probably the way I worded this one, but I know on the previous uh, session, it actually came out, came up with like possible answers from the student, but I know I would have to go back to it. But um, basically the student was just saying, okay, yes, awesome type of thing, just like responding to it. But we see how it's focusing on how the teacher could break down the parts and how they could have those conversations with the students. So that was ChatGPT. Now, something that I actually, I thought of it as I saw one of my teachers, or she's my, she, she helps out Ms. Lopez with the Spanish testers. I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't even tried it with the Spanish, right? So, um, I actually was working on something like to like prior to this, like the 20 minutes prior to this to see how it would look like once I saw her log in. And it's pretty much the same thing. Um, I know that it wasn't as, I guess, because it's not like a Spanish expert, but it wasn't as um, accurate because we I did like a student sample of an eight for TA and it scored it like a two um, or three out of five or something, not like a two out of five. No, two out of 10, sorry. But um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, it, it does help with that discussion though. But um, for that, uh, because of time, I won't go over the Spanish specifically, but I do have all of them here. For example, the description, um, sorry, the Spanish rubric, right? And then the description, I don't know if I kept it. I don't know if I saved it, but. I literally just asked ChatGPT to like, oh, look, it's all here. I kept it here. So for example, I asked it to do it. Uh, this one was a, 
the one that, oh, this is where I asked it to translate it. Like the little description that I had of the rubric, can you do it in Spanish? <laughs> and then it did it, right? So then I put here, the only difference that I added, if you notice, was the Spanish part. You're the rater for the star Spanish. Um, and then they asked, it asked me for the rubric. I put literally what they put, what they told me to put over here. I put it there and then I put the Spanish um, passage, the prompt. I don't know why I translated it, but I picked it up. <laughs> and this was the score five for one of our students. I was super proud of him. Um, and then this one, you know, it picked it up from five out of five. This one in TA, I mean, I, I guess, right, like two out of five. But uh, for TA, it was actually an, a total of eight. So I'm assuming like a four, right, four out of five. But as you see, ChatGPT scored it a two out of five. And it tells here, maybe it's not fluent in Spanish, but that's the only one I tried. Maybe there's a different one that's better in Spanish. I was to have to look into it. But it's the same process. That's, I guess, homework for me, right? Um, all right. So that was Magic School and ChatGPT. Hopefully, I get, like I said, those were only two because of time. Hopefully, it, it, you learn something right and you find the effectiveness in it. Um, again, it's the same process and pretty much the same description, whether it's in elementary. I know I sure do elementary, but it's secondary. If you notice the same steps, it's asking you one by one. Um, and again, you, you decide as an individual, as a grade level, as a campus, which one you want to use. Um, or there's a different one. Like I said, these are the only two that I, I looked into. Oh, I practice with. So I do want to go over uh, the benefits, right? And as an overall, just to kind of summarize, um, as we saw, we are able to tackle misconception, and I'll talk about those in a bit. Teacher, it builds teacher confidence, right? Because a lot of times we don't, we're not the experts. We're we're not pretty much cheating, as the kids would say, right? Or we would say, like, you're cheating, you're using AI. No, we're just working smarter and not harder, right? Because we do know that even though we are, you know, against it or for it or whatever, we can't do anything about it, but AI is a raider, officially a raider, right, for start. Um, so we do want to work smart about how we can see the accuracy of how AI is rating these, these scores uh, or these responses, sorry. So it also builds student confidence, right, within those teacher, the vocabulary. Um, I know La last year or this past year when we were getting ready we're like okay like they kind of freaked out like um you know what like it's ai and they're like what how are we going to beat a computer like they're so smart and so forth but it's just about those conversations about you know what this is and showing them like this is how your ai is rating them right like so how can we it's telling you how to improve it or you could just use it for your personal use peer editing i will go over how that looks like accurate scoring teacher student conferences examples as you saw and in capital letters it completely saves time right i know that with all the other scores and all the benchmarks that we have to upload and we have to score them this is just the fastest and most effective way for us to know without being biased right um i know secondary not only do they have those 22 students but they have all those students with like within those um their english classes right so Definitely, definitely saves you time versus actually scoring them one by one, um, at least doubled, right, or or things like that, because you still want to see what they're doing. And it gives you accurate data. So misconceptions, uh, one of them is ECR, ECR is only on an ex informational text. Oh, I should say informational, sorry. It's on an informational text. So as we saw, this one was actually from a literary piece. Um, so basically, we want to make sure that we practice with our students, not only on, infer on a specific genre, but on all of them. We could create um, a, a prompt with any any um, any genre, sorry. So, you know, I know literary pieces focuses mostly on characters, character building, and information is more of explaining something, right? Uh, or both of them, right? So it's just uh, making sure that we're analyzing that data as well. Um, a lot of us think that race doesn't work. Personally, um, 
as we analyze, we use it. It's not race on its own, right? But we do use racer, racer for some of us, right? Where we're stating and answering, we're citing and providing evidence, and then we're citing again and providing evidence for that second part, and then we're just adding in conclusion and um, putting pretty much our introduction, which goes into the next one uh, for the restating and answering. So, I mean, based on experience, based on our examples and our data, it's not race, but it is race, or, uh, I guess you could like R-A-C-E-C-E -E, and then the R-A again, I guess. But um, yeah, it, it does work right effectively. Another one is repetition gives you a zero. I can guarantee you it does not. I know some of us is like, oh, no, like they're just going to repeat themselves all the time. So if you notice here, um, this student number one, right, um, starts off with this sentence and then at the end he finishes with the same sentence. I, for my purpose in terms of teacher confidence, in order he would have gotten like that 10, he just needed to add in conclusion here, right? Over here, the same thing that students sample the events. First of all, this shows <coughs> and then the same thing over here in conclusion. And then they added that um, extra little gist. So everything's um, as we go through all these samples, a lot of them are repetition. The students are pretty much trained to just copy and paste or in this case, they know that we practice with them where they're writing it first, right? But they write what they put in the introduction exactly on the on the conclusion. They just add that transitional phrase, uh, word, phrase in conclusion and they get those. We've seen and we have data where they get those 10 points. So um, repetition still works. The more sentences, the better. This is also a misconception. The more sentences is actually scarier, I would say, because the more the students want to add and add and add and add, they get, you know, they want to add and it goes, it veers off their misconception. Uh, I mean, sorry, they're, <laughs> I'm reading misconception, their essential idea. So the more that you limit it, limit them, it's better so that they could stay on topic. Um, just think it's literally six sentences, like SCR is two restate answer and then provide evidence. This one is restate answer. That's one, right? Uh, cite your evidence, explain it. That's three in total already. And then cite it again and provide an uh, explanation again. And then that last one is your conclusion. So it's literally a total of six sentences. And we, um, like I said, we see it here. So students have to reword the evidence versus using word per word. No, students can actually give that I know the our students are trained to like look at the passage side by side as they're writing it first before they actually type it out um, only because it saves the time. I know like sometimes the students when they reword it and, and if you have those high students, by all means, let them do their thing. Right. But those students that, you know, we where they're struggling um, to even find one like a, an evidence, just just have them copy and paste it. Right. As long as they give whether the like, you know, credits to it. We tell them like, it's not your writing, it's theirs. So give them credit, right? So we want to make sure that they either put in, um, in, sorry, the author or this shows or in paragraphs, so and so it says. So always giving it credit or with quotation marks. I know sometimes we've seen that quotation mark doesn't affect if they don't do it or not, but we obviously teach it because it's part of grammar. We don't know if the reader or the AI is going to pick it up as as a as something bad right or or an x i guess you could say when it comes to the the convention parts so those are a few misconceptions that data shows that are not that you know um to ease our mind a little bit i guess you could say classroom activities some of the classroom activities that we use um on campus and i know across district there's i we've seen an alignment oh, oh across like the district we've seen an alignment in the graphic organizer but, but some of the the classroom activities the teachers have posted on their google classroom either google slides or google docs um to where the students are just type practicing typing so they're they know that they're used to putting it on a graphic organizer um and the graphic organizer i refer for based on like the district whatever the district provide uh personally I know our camp after studying it. Um, 
I could probably say, I guess you could say, <laughs> and then to my own horn here, but working with alongside with our teachers and seeing what worked and analyzing our our rubric and with the help of Ms. Carla, um, elementary coordinator for reading, we came up with a graphic organizer and that one pretty much was the one that was uploaded this past, you know, year. Um, but basically it works and it's the one that's been providing our students those scores of tens. I know region one also came, uh, came in and helped us out with some, and we were proud to say that we were pretty much following the same thing. So here they, the, the teachers uploaded, they, they, you could see like how it's already, you know, um, we see the student responses where it's there with their, um, answering re like I said, restating, answering, citing evidence. Explaining, citing evidence against so this one probably uh, forgot the, uh, the explaining, but those are the activities just so that not only are they practicing answering, uh, but they're also practicing the typing part. And we see all the different genres that they're practicing with pretty much. Um, they, pra they practice one a week. And then another activity is a peer editing. I think it's very, very powerful because you're holding the students accountable to see what they're missing by looking at what the peers are missing because they're really good at checking what everybody else is missing, right? Um, so they like to call you out, even myself. They call me out all the time. So here it's the peer editing. So this one could either be, um, we start them off first on the physical copy. So they're looking for all of these and highlighting their peers when they switch off their graphic organizer um, and highlighting, right? Check for the central idea. Do, do they have the pink? Do they have the orange? Do they have the citation and evidence? So forth. So they're doing that. Um, for those are uh, our higher students are actually doing the online version. So it's just depending, right? Um, graphic organizer, I would tell them like, do it with your partner first. Once they check it, type it, and then it comes to me so I could be that final rater, right? So sometimes, um, and I forgot to upload pictures, but our students were actually using our little friendly student rubric to actually rate them and everything. And so they get excited with that. So there's a, that's another activity. Teacher collaboration is very important to become the experts and not be biased. So AI kind of helps us that. I know sometimes we want to be like, this is my very high student. He was just having a bit bad day. I know he could do it. Um, on the benchmark, it was just not his day. I'm just going to give him a, a five and I'll just talk to him after. Uh, that's not going to help him, right? So we want to make sure that in that case, we want to show like use the AI and even show him like, hey, this AI is a raider no matter what in your star. This is what's going to how they're scoring you. So how can we make it better? And then the conversations goes from there. I know um, last semester um, after after benchmark one and after benchmark two, um, our campus, we have little sessions. We have a session to where we all sit together um, during, you know, plan the time that's provided, right, to score them before actually uploading the the scores. I know we have to input on DMAC. So we all sit together. We're scoring them together. We're looking at them um, at the time before we knew about AI, right? <laughs> like, And we were pretty much changing each other's color coding and then just being the raters. Now we have AI, so now we're going to be able to save that time as well or making sure that it's more accurate on what we think, I mean, versus what we think, right, personally as humans. So this last part is how will AI help you when scoring ECR? Um, I do have the collaboration board. Those of you that don't have or are not on Nearpod, feel free to add your participation on the chat. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll go ahead and give you about three minutes. After all, after from those both uh, samples that I provided for Magic School and ChatGPT, kind of summarizing a little bit what we learned, how will AI help you when scoring ECR? You could participate on the Nearpod, or you could add it on the chat.
Another set of eyes to score the ECRs and compare different perspectives. Beautiful. We have about one more minute. Again, feel free to add anything on the chat. Oh, 10 more seconds. If anyone else is typing, um, go ahead and hit submit, just even though you're not done. Once I click next, it's going to, um, excuse me, my throat keeps trying. It's going to completely kick you out. Like, I know your thoughts are valuable. So I'll give you about 10 more seconds to just finalize and I'll move on. Coach students, I love that word. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to go ahead and continue. Sorry if I cancel out your thoughts, but feel free to add anything on the chat. All right. Now that I've gone through this, go ahead and use the chat to um, put an image or a GIF that shows how you feel about ECR and using AI for ECR rating. Looks like a little bit positive, right? Confident. Positive, right? Confident. All right. So some AI resources just using, like I like mentioned previously, there's different types out there. Copilot, uh, Reina, ChatGPT. Um, and like I said, I know during our lunch and learn, there was a lot more mention. Um, so feel free to just explore anyone that works and is more you think is more accurate for you. Um, again, thank you so much for joining um, during the session. Hopefully you learned what was needed. I know that what was shared was an evaluation. So your feedback is very valuable to us. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the conference.